Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One muddier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized with water. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Now why did God tell the prophet Isaiah to speak these words to the people? Israel sinned, turned away from God, and began worshipping idols. And the country became divided and was conquered by Syria and later Babylon. And so the Lord is saying, cheer up, the worst is over. You've done enough penance. Things are going to start to get better now. Then Isaiah goes on to prophesy about the coming of John the Baptist, who would, of course, be the precursor of Jesus Christ, the long-awaited Messiah, who would make everything right between us and God again. So these were indeed comforting words to the Israelites after all they had been through. Advent also serves this purpose for us. Advent should give us comfort. Advent should be a reminder for us that God does not abandon us. Yes, because the world is sinful, the world is dark, the world is frightening, the world is discouraging. But no more dark, no more frightening, no more discouraging than it was 2,000 years ago. When in the dead of night, a little baby was born that would start to bring the light back into the world. 2,000 years ago, a little baby was born that gave us an escape, an eternal life, after this one. So as bad as things may get in the world, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to dread what's coming tomorrow. Because even if the worst does happen, we die, that begins a whole new life for us. Away from pain and suffering. Away from heartbreak and disappointment. That should comfort us. That should make us look forward to tomorrow. Not dread it. And so Advent, like Lent, reminds us of the need to do penance. As I said, the prophecy of Isaiah doesn't foretell the coming of Christ, but rather the coming of the one who would precede Christ, John the Baptist. And what was John's message? St. Mark's Gospel tells us today, John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Repentance first, comfort second. Isaiah is, uh, is told to speak this prophecy of comfort to Israel after their penance was complete. Israel sinned. They had it all. They had a nation of their own that was thriving financially. They had the temple. They were free of pagan influences around them thanks to King David. And as soon as they had it all, as soon as there was no more struggle, as soon as they didn't have to fight for land, defend their homes, struggle over crops and herds, as soon as there was peace and prosperity and they could relax, they reject God. Then the grass started looking greener on my neighbor's lawn. Then they started acting in greed and lust, imitating their king, Solomon. And that led them to worship false gods. And then it all came crashing down. We could say the same of the United States. We could say the same of us individually. That's usually the way of it. 
When do most people really, really, really start to focus on their relationship with God? When their lives are in crisis. Or when they're getting old and they don't have, and they have uh, more, more years behind them than ahead of them. Let's be honest. That's usually when most people, not all, but most, really start to focus on their relationship with God. Okay, that's certainly not the ideal. It's not the ideal starting place. But any starting place is a good one as long as we get started. And it starts with repentance. What's the first thing you do when you get a new apartment or a new house? Before you move in, you clean it. Just so. We can't move ahead in any kind of relationship with God unless we clean out the junk first in confession. We can't move ahead in any kind of relationship to God unless we're ready to make the decision, I want God. Wanting God. That's where it begins. And when we finally want God, as soon as we realize there isn't enough room in our souls for the God we love and the sins we desire, we must choose. Why did so many people journey out into the desert to see John the Baptist, to listen to him preach, to be baptized by him? I suspect it was curiosity at first. Whether people were saying, hey, there's this holy guy in the desert who lives, lives off of locusts and wild honey... And you just have to hear this message he's preaching. Or people were saying, there's this whack job out in the desert dressed in camel skins who preaches in the desert. What a freak show. You got to see this guy. It's priceless. Whichever it was, curiosity led them out there. Because people with faith, deep faith, real faith, living faith, are a curiosity to people with no faith. They can't quite figure us out. And I get this all the time. People with no faith are fascinated by what would ever make a guy willingly, voluntarily, take a vow of celibacy. I, I get this with a lot of non-Catholics. I get this with a lot of atheists. Usually the first, that's the first question they ask me about celibacy, especially when I was a younger priest. It's a puzzle to them. Which is why, like John the Baptist, they usually brush us off as naive or nuts. But the curiosity, in and of itself, is a sign that they want God. They can't quite put their finger on it. But they sense an emptiness in themselves. A small hole that they long to fill. And all the vain pursuits of their lives, all the money and possessions and cravings and desires, just haven't been able to fill it. So they go out to see John. They journey into the desert. They leave the comfort of their homes. They travel to a place that's hot and barren. They're separated from all the distractions that surround them every day. So there's nothing confronting them except the barren desert, the prophet's words, and the cool waters of the Jordan River. They listen, and they're confronted with a message that delivers hope. A Messiah is coming soon, and with him, a way to deliver you from all your past offenses to God. To begin fresh and new with Him again. If you're willing to let go of your sins and start living in a new way. Everyone must choose for themselves. Do I want the God I love more than the sins I desire? Do I at least want to love God more than the sins I desire? Those that answer yes, plunge into the Jordan River and commit themselves to repent of their sins. Those that don't, scoff and leave. And these are the same choices we have been confronted with ever since. We're constantly surrounded by distractions and temptations. And every week we journey here to church, the desert. Let's face it, every church is like a desert. It's always a little uncomfortable in church. The seats are wood. The kneelers are hard. It's either too hot or too cold. There are creatures all around us making strange noises. There's no food. Just like the desert. The only thing that surrounds us are the uncomfortable desert. The words of the priest. And the cooling waters of the sacraments. 
The words offer hope and comfort. The Messiah has come and offers a new relationship with God and with it, the promise of a new life, an eternal life, if you're willing to let go of your sins and start living a better way. Which will you choose? Will you plunge into the Jordan, embrace repentance, and try to be a better person today than you were yesterday? That's all it takes. Do you want God? Or at least want to want God more than the sins you desire. Because wanting God is where it starts. Start right now. Start today. But start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.